Hi everyone, my name is Carlos Corrado, pastor and founder of Christ Point Church Melbourne. Thank you and bless you for allowing us to come to the sanctuary of your homes to share God's Word with you. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are here to share the good news of salvation to everyone, beginning here at home in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, all the way to the ends of the world. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in Heaven and are a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. We at Christ Point Melbourne want to be able to help people connect to their destiny and their destiny is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then we want to equip them to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the Gospel of Jesus. The Word of God tells us this in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are living in unprecedented times around the world. We want to remind you that if you are living in the state of Victoria, Australia, and even though there has been a decrease of cases of coronavirus, and the fact that the students will be returning to face-to-face -to -face learning as of tomorrow, we are still in a quarantine lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are a responsible church, respectful of the law, but also interested in making sure that you and everybody else is safe. So please stay home, stay safe, stay informed, wear a mask, but above all, bring all your anxieties and your worries to God. The Bible tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We have ensured that during our streamings and recordings, all safety measures and precautions have been adhered to. I want to take some time to remind you of some of the activities that are happening here at Christ Point Church Melbourne. Next week we have Pastor Peter who will be delivering the second and final session on sanctification. Sunday 25th of October we have Pastor Roger who will be preaching us a powerful message named God Calls Us to Fight. Our November series Confronting Our Culture will run for four weeks. Then on the fifth Sunday of November, we will have Pastor Jonathan running the Sunday service. Then we will begin our Christmas series, Christmas Stories, which will run for all of December. Oh yes, be sure to join us for our Christmas Carols Night, Saturday the 19th of December at 7 p.m. via YouTube Live and or live stream via the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free on the App Store and Google Play. Lots of things are happening in the next couple of months and next year will be an even bigger and better year for us all here at Christ Point Church Melbourne, God willing. Again, thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for having given us the blessing of being able to connect to you via Christ Point Church Melbourne. From the comfort of our homes and dwelling places, we pray that you give us ears to listen minds to remember and hearts to keep your holy word. We pray for those who are sick, those who are struggling with cancer and other serious illnesses. You know them by name and you know their specific needs and wants. We want to pray that you answer them according to your perfect will and timing. We pray for those who are mourning. Please, Lord, bring them peace and comfort at this time. We pray for our children who will be returning to school tomorrow. Be with them and protect them. Be with their teachers and give them the wisdom to guide them. Lord, I ask that you use me as a vessel and give me the authority to convey your message to those who see and hear us this morning. May they all be touched by the Holy Spirit and your word. We pray this and a whole lot more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay with us as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Dreams. 
streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place When I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name When the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Oh, there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory.
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Here's what's happening at Christ Point Church, Melbourne. Remember to download the Christ Point Church, Melbourne app. Free from the App Store and Google Play. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. And visit our website. Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is a fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease at the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters his heart. He burns the shield of fire. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thank you. 
do what is right in our own eyes. We listen to ourselves rather than God. We choose to worship lesser gods. This is a problem as old as time, but it does not have to continue that way. We can learn each day how to live our lives for God. In how we use our resources, status, and time, we can worship with our lives. We can walk in obedience. To make a difference in the world. To be a light in the midst of darkness. So let's shine for Him. Join us this Sunday at 10 a.m. and let your finest things keep shining through. Welcome back this morning. Let me take you back in time to November 9, 1965. The biggest power failure in U.S. history occurred as all of the state of New York and portions of seven neighboring states and a part of eastern Canada are plunged into darkness. The Great Northern Blackout began at the height of rush hour, delaying millions of commuters, trapping 800,000 people in New York subways and stranding thousands more in office buildings, elevators, and trains. The blackout was caused by the tripping of a 230 kilowatt transmission line near Ontario, Canada. Total chaos, and mind you, this was during the day. Let's get closer to our recent history. In the largest electrical outage in history, well, so far at least, the July 31st, 2012 blackout of India affected an area encompassing about 670 million people, which is around 9% of the world's population. On this day, three other countries' interconnected northern power grids collapsed for several hours, affecting 22 states from the eastern border with Myanmar to its western border with Pakistan. Now, closer still to our current day, last year on September 16th, a power outage hit Central America, which left Nicaragua, Honduras, and El Salvador without power for just over an hour. According to the Nicaragua state-owned National Electricity Transmission Company, the organization said technical failures were to blame. Electricity operator in El Salvador gave a little more information by a statement, and this was, there was an emergency in the Central American electrical system due to a failure in a 230 kilowatt supply line in Honduras. Now, we have become so dependent on electricity that our world turns upside down when it is taken away from us. When blackouts like these occur at night, we are in complete darkness. Our sense of visibility is taken away from us. So let us go to scripture and see what the book of Revelations chapter 1 verse 20 tells us. And the word of God says this, As for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. We would go astray in attempting to interpret the book of Revelations if we ignore the fact that the writer uses apocalyptic language to convey the great truth about the Lord Jesus Christ's future work in the world. John uses this type of language to describe events revealed to him by Christ that were beyond the imagination of the people of his day. Apocalyptic literature was often used by scriptural writers during times of great international stress. This was certainly the case when Revelation was given to John. The early Christians were under severe persecution, and John himself was in exile in the island of Patmos because of his faith. With eager longing, he looked across the mainland where the churches were experiencing severe attacks by the forces of darkness. It is not incidental that his vision of the exalted Christ described in chapter 1 contains images or an image of seven churches as seven lampstands with the triumphant Christ walking in the midst of them. The churches are described as precious, beautiful lampstands, lifting up the light and dispelling the darkness. 
However, the question is, what is darkness? The dictionary tells us that the word darkness means the following, the state of partial and or total absence of light. The world was not doing too well as we know. There were wars, ones being fought in battlefields, ones in the financial stage and markets. There's pollution and climate change, hunger and poverty, and many other things which I don't have the time to mention, but were and still are in plain sight. Then all of a sudden, we're throwing coronavirus in the mix. Now that sure got things going. Now the world has been hit with this crisis. And although some countries are trying to deal as best as they can with the health, financial, emotional turmoil that came with COVID-19, most countries are still in the dark in regards to a way out. We who live in the city of Melbourne, Australia, are still in a stage four lockdown and perhaps still unaware what the post effects will be for our lifestyles. There is still darkness on what the post-COVID life or the new COVID norm will look like for us. But we can honestly say that the world is filled with darkness. Darkness is a metaphor for such things as ignorance, failure, confusion, despair, loneliness, fear, disappointment, and even death. Even in a world where knowledge is doubling about every five years, technology has taken leaps ahead into the future, people remain in tragic darkness. They continue to ask questions as, where did I come from? What is the real purpose of my being? What is to be my ultimate destiny? Apart from divine revelation in the Word of God, these questions cannot be answered. And now, as we acknowledge that the world is filled with darkness, we can also be certain that Jesus came as the light of the world into the world to dispel darkness. The prophet Isaiah had said of the time when Christ would be born. And we find this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2. And the Word of God says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. The prophet Isaiah speaks of a time that would come when a great light of salvation through the Messianic King would dispel the dark gloom of judgment. When Jesus began his ministry in Galilee, the fulfillment of this prophecy was set into motion. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 16 puts it this way, The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And it was by the light of a heavenly star that the wise men found the Christ child. And Matthew 2, 2 reminds us, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Jesus was dedicated at the temple, Simeon proclaimed that Christ has come. And we find this in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 32, which tells us, A light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Apart from the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, an Orthodox first century Jew would never have looked at the Messiah and turned his blessing to the Gentiles. For the Jews believed that the Messiah would come for Israel alone. Yet the Spirit so enlightened Simeon that when he saw Jesus, he recognized a wider purpose than the glory of Israel alone. Jesus would be a light to the Gentiles and a hope to all people. John said the following in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It was no accident with this prophetic background that Jesus later declared the following, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we find this in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12. As God had led the children of Israel through the wilderness by a pillar of fire, so Jesus Christ came to lead people by means of a divine light. Jesus came to disperse the darkness. 
we need to be clear about a few things about Jesus Christ. Christ came to cause the darkness that beclouds the souls of people to disappear. He continues to light the way by providing guidance and answers for people who trust in Him. Now, Jesus, He is the light of the world. The light of the world comes silently like the sun each day. He is the light of the world. The light of the world comes in grace rather than on the basis of human merit, just as the sun comes up graciously every day. Jesus, He is the light of the world. The light of the world shines continuously like the sun century after century. Jesus, He is the light of the world. The light of the world comes powerfully like the sun to bring life, to bring love, to bring hope, and to bring beauty. We also need to be clear about the fact that Jesus Christ came that those who dwell in spiritual death and darkness might have eternal life. This life is to be found in Jesus Christ and in Him alone and no one or nothing else. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 12 tells us the following, And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. We need to be clear about the fact that Jesus Christ, as the light of the world, came to reveal the way to abundant life. A full life is not found through going in one's own way or one's pursuing material gains. It is found only through Jesus Christ. People do not find real life by simply eating earthly bread. They find it as they take into their innermost being the bread of life. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 tells us this. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. This spiritual nourishment will provide them with all they need for abundant living. We have a responsibility towards the world and non-believers. Now Jesus commands us, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Each church, like a beautiful lampstand, is to be a dispenser of the light that gives life to those who will respond to Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to see churches who know and put into practice the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ and use Jesus or have Jesus as their focus. However, on the contrary, it is saddening when we hear preachers and pastors say that their churches are not evangelistic churches or outreaching churches, that inviting people to Christ is not part of their norm. It seems that they are after the great omission and not the great commission. I wonder what Jesus would say to them. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne have taken up the great commission seriously preaching the good news of salvation, the person of salvation, the Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. It is imperative that we remember the following. Individual Christians and congregations are reflectors of a divine light, of the divine light. We are to serve the same function for Jesus as the moon serves as a reflector of sunlight. The sun is a tremendous source of heat and light while the moon is cold and frigid. Nevertheless, the moon does serve as a reflector of the sunlight, providing illumination to those who live on our services. We as Christians, as true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, are to, one, reflect the glorious light of Jesus Christ as He reveals the way to God and to abundant life. We as Christians, as true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, are to reflect the all-sufficient light of Jesus Christ. For He is sufficient to meet the deepest needs of all. 
we as Christians, as true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, are to reflect the essential light of Jesus Christ, without which people dwell in darkness and death. We as Christians, as true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, are to reflect the unsetting light of Jesus Christ. Somewhere on the face of the earth, at all times, the moon is reflecting the light of the sun. We as Christians, as true believers and followers of Jesus Christ, are to let Christ live in us, in such a way as to constantly send forth the light of love, the light of joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 tells us the following, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, Paul lists nine character traits that the Holy Spirit produces in a believer's life. Jesus Christ is the supreme example of every spiritual quality, having embodied the fruit of the Spirit perfectly because each one is inextricably linked to who He is. The list of spiritual fruit falls into three categories. The upward qualities, which are love, joy, peace the outward qualities, which are long-suffering, kindness, and goodness, the inward qualities, which are faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Calling all of these spirit-produced characteristics, fruit indicates beauty, spontaneity, quietness, and growth instead of effort, labor, strain, and toil. The use of the singular fruit indicates that there is unity and coherence in the outworking of these virtues. The pastoral team here at Christ Point Church Melbourne will be delivering a series on the fruit of the Spirit in the next few months, so be sure to join us. Now, I want to finish by saying the following. You are the light of the world. Now, Jesus did not say you are a light in the world. He said you are are a light in the world. And we find that in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Everywhere we go, everything we watch on TV, the internet, social media, we see digital signs that convey a continuous series of messages, including constant promo messages from Christ Point Church Melbourne. In a sense, this is a picture of what each one of us should be in our communities. The light that shines forth must come from the love of Jesus Christ within us. And our individual lights will blend with the lights of others with whom we worship, with whom we work, with whom we fellowship and minister. God wants us to send forth a radiant, cheering, helpful, benevolent, revealing light into the darkness of this world. Jesus wants you to know that you are God's lampstand, that you are the light of the world. Today is the day for you to begin. And what I want to say to you before I finish is, let that light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm Carlos Corrado for Christ Point Church, Melbourne. Thank you for joining us. See you all next week. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the light of your love that has shined into our hearts through faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the illuminating work of the Holy Spirit as he opens up our understanding to the truth of your scripture. We thank you for the opportunity you give us to serve you, the opportunity and blessing to be able to minister to others. Thank you for the reminder that you give us that we are the light of the world. Help us, Father, to be able to shine brightly and to share your love, to share your mercy, to share your grace, to share your birth, your life, your death, and your resurrection with those who do not yet know of the good news of salvation. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. 
the footprints of Jesus give you the strength and confidence to follow and the fire of the Holy Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God today, tomorrow, and always. In Jesus' name we believe and pray. Amen. The preacher has finished his message. It is now for you to make a decision to come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart today, repeat this prayer with me from the bottom of your heart. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me. I now turn away from my sins and ask you to forgive me. I now invite you into my heart and life. I now trust you as Lord and Saviour of my life, and I will follow you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. I encourage you to contact us through our contact details on our webpage, Facebook and YouTube, Christ Point Melbourne Online. If you'd like to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us and we will help you and equip you in your new journey in Christ. But also to go out into the world and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others who do not know Him yet. God bless.